first, though, should we talk about Spurs? Yeah, if you we want. talk about Spurs, Flav? Why yeah. not? It's your team, isn't it? Yeah. It's your team. Um, I think first, let's talk about what should happen for you in the summer in terms of incomings. Uh, and, and start with the news, actually, that you've act- you've made technically your, your first signing as well in uh, in Timo Werner. Mm. Uh, uh, the loan has been extended, hasn't it, till the end of next season. How did you feel about that news? Uh, it made sense, I guess. You know, it's, it's not the most exciting transfer news to start with, but it's probably the easiest bit of business we could get done. Have you been impressed with him? I, I think he's six out of ten. You know, some Spurs fans absolutely love him. Um, mm. I'm in the position of he's, I think he's better than some Spurs fans give him credit for. Um, takes all good positions. He's finishing his way forward. Like, it's as bad. Like, I know, I thought everyone might be like, you know, overblowing it a little bit. It can't be that bad. Or, or maybe that it, it had improved or something, you know, as he he went away and then he, he's come just, back. But it's the same, isn't no, it? No, it's exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but th- th- there's much more to his game than just whether or not he can put the ball in the net. And um, it just made sense. Like, it's, it's, there's no transfer fee. There's an option to buy of like 10 million euros at the end of the mm. season. Look, our squad is... At the moment, in that left-hand side, you've got Brian Hill or, you know, Son's having to play out there. Werner, if he's an option off the bench, he's, isn't a bad player to bring on, especially because the way he plays and speed, you know. But if he is our first choice left winger throughout the whole season, then that probably isn't good enough. Mm, uh, let's hear what Simon Jordan made of this uh, signing, because uh, I, d- I don't think he's the biggest fan. This is what he had to say earlier on White and Jordan. Well, they've got an option for. I mean, I mean, in football, in Premier League terms, eight and a half million pounds is two yeah. and six, isn't it? Mm. So, I mean, I looked at it and I did, my first reaction was, I mean, he's an honest player. He'll give you his best. Yeah. But he's a speedboat about a brain. You know, he doesn't achieve outcomes that once upon a time when he came to Chelsea, he came in with this reputation of being a goal scorer, um, and obviously had achieved that. But we saw what he was like at Chelsea. I don't see any material improvements. At he is Tottenham. what he is. He is what he is. Mm. And to me, looking at that, I looked at it and thought, well, Brennan Johnson is a work in progress. And there's parts about Brennan Johnson that worry me that he's never going to be the full, the full package because there's a composure that top players have and they are able to stop themselves in a moment and be able to get it out of their feet. And he doesn't appear to have that. He always appears to be in a hurry. Speedboat without a brain. Love that. That's, that's very good, isn't it? Do you think that sums Werner up? And actually, I want to ask you another question here. Do you feel that going forward... Werner is actually is he starting for Spurs or is this very much he's going to be a squad player and an impact player no no there'll be moments where he does start and some people might think well he's not good enough he's a speedboat without a brain I think that's unfair but there are elements of truth to it um off the bench, he will cause many defences problems later on in the game and you've seen how effective Spurs have been this season under Postacoglu late on um I just don't see the downside in having him as a part of the squad. Mm. And especially there's no fee. It solves squad depth issues. You're not going to get a better player who's going to come to spot Tottenham and sit on the bench than Timo Werner, I don't think. That and said, especially like, at the end, if you can get him for eight million. Yeah, maybe even in a year's time, we don't even want him. Like, mm. it, But at this stage, it's, it, it, to me, is it, it, it makes complete sense to sign him. Mm. Um if he is the solution, if he's Daniel Levy's solution and Langer's solution and Big Angie's solution to for the rest of the season that we are going to rely on him as a starting left winger, yeah. then you would think that's not good enough. That's yeah. not going to get us where we need to go. You, what you, I just want to take exception to what I read on the uh, running order. What did you say? What? What, what, what did it say when you said what did Spurs oh, have to Spurs, do to Spurs to get to get back to the top four with these new signings? Yeah, we were two points behind Villa. Not much. <laughs> you know what I mean? If we have a good season, a couple of results go away, then so we'll be in do- the top four. Are you doing an ange with the whole, why can't we be, why can't we be challengers, mate? Absolutely, mate. <laughs> it's that, that is, That's essentially where we need to be in a headspace because we'll never get there otherwise. So the question to me, you should see, what mm. do we need to do to win the league? Yeah. it's not. It, it's And it's not take Timo Werner back on loan, is it? It's take, it, take him as a part of a squad. Yeah, it can, you can do it. Is it? I think so. If, he's not gonna, he wouldn't be an Arsenal squad, would he? He wouldn't. He wouldn't be an Arsenal squad and they're challenging Man City for the title. He wouldn't be in Liverpool squad. They challenged for quite a lot of it. Mm. So if you want your Spurs side to be actually challenging, that, I mean, to be fair, that, that, this was your shout that you want them to be challenging for the league next season. I think it's more realistic to, to kind of challenge for the top four. 
Yeah, all right. If you want to have a realistic, boring conversation on talk sport, <laughs> then let's, let's, let's have that conversation. We need to win one more game than we didn't win last year to finish in the top four, if that's what you want me to say. Yeah. Well, well, St. James's Park, didn't they? Um, <laughs> uh, also, out of interest, I mean, we, we've had a, a couple of uh, Spurs callers on over the, the last few nights and get in touch as well. 03717223344 on this. We're live on YouTube as well. Uh, dive into those comments as well, because Flav is, is going gonna, is gonna to read some of those out as well. So, so jump on to YouTube on the TalkSport uh, uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, a lot of them were saying that actually the the priority here should be getting a number nine through the door. Yeah. Now, Enes Unal uh, yesterday signed for 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 Bournemouth for about fourteen million. Um, that for me, I looked at that and thought, well, does that mean that Dominic Solanke might be moving on? Because because last season Unal was very much second fiddle to him. So if Bournemouth are bringing him in. Are they kind of bracing themselves for Solanke departing? Yeah. And would Spurs be the right club? For Solanke to go to, I think he would have he would be a success at Tottenham. And often it's it's interesting you say that because in the same way that Brentford have signed another number nine for Ivan Tony, there aren't many teams that have two out and out number nines in their squad mm. these days. I can't think of another club that does really like you know Man, Man City don't, Spurs don't. So in there will be ramifications whoever comes in for players that currently exist in the squad. I know we're going to talk about that shortly, but. Mm. Um, Solanke's again. I, I do think. I think there might there would be a little bit of a somewhat negative reaction in the Spurs fan base. Do I don't agree with it. I think he's good well, enough. To sorry, be- based on what he scored nineteen Premier League goals last yeah, season. Absolutely for I, Bournemouth. Yeah, but who I, overachieved, but for Bournemouth, that that is an unbelievable return. Yeah, indeed, indeed. But I think there's an idea at, at Spurs that we're potentially sh- should be fishing in other waters no than the way. ones that Solanke. So what kind of waters? No, for, your, for your title I, challenge, I, I I agree. I think Sol- <laughs> I think Solanke I think Solanke would be a good signing. I just think that some fans out there might be underwhelmed by it. Now you shouldn't listen to fans really. Typically, when 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 who who should be signed and who shouldn't, mm. because scouts exist and lots of data goes into it. And if they're looking at Solanke, then it would be because they're convinced that he is the right man. Okay, okay do you I think? Th- but if you had Solanke or Ivan Tony, yeah. So do you think that Tottenham fans would be underwhelmed if it was Ivan Tony? No. Or do you think they'd, they'd really welcome it, they'd love it? I, look, can I, just, like, I mean, Tony's a bit older than Solanke yeah, as well. He is, he is. But Solanke probably fits the profile a little bit, a little bit more. I think, was he 25, I think? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, you know, in terms of Salon ability and, um, you know, how important that is going to be to Spurs going forward, then Solanke's probably a better fit. I think Ivan Tony has a kind of a different profile. Mm. I don't think there is much between them in terms of, of quality and if Spurs get either one of them it solves problems that we, we currently have questions for. Mm, if you're watching us uh, live on YouTube get involved with our poll as well. We've just put it up. Who would be a better signing for Spurs? Dominic Solanke or Ivan Tony? And Flav, it's currently 56% to 44% in favour of Solanke. Really? As well. That's interesting. I think. And that goes against what you've been saying there. That, I mean, you. Are you saying that you'd be happy. You personally would be happier to see Tony come through the door? I can't. It's hard hard to split. Potentially. Potentially. You know, you think what Tony was doing before the indiscretions and, 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 you know, the the numbers. Long time out, yeah, and and things like that. And actually didn't have. You know, he didn't have the strongest end to the season either. Yeah, and and Solanke, you're talking about one season, but Mm. the one season as a number nine doing big numbers is. It puts you into a different stratosphere. Look mm. at Gokoresh at, uh, at Lisbon. You know, the, he's probably the most in-demand number nine in world football and he's going to command 100 million euros. So I think some Spurs fans are looking at it and going, why aren't we in the conversation for mm. him, Gokoresh, or, or, or for Osman? Why aren't we in that conversation? Mm. And the answer typically is we don't want to spend the money and we shouldn't. That shouldn't stop us. Mm. 03717223344. If you're a Spurs fan, would you be underwhelmed if you were signing Dominic Solanke? And what do you think your priority is this window? Where do you need to strengthen? Is it as a number nine? Do you need to get more forwards? Do you need another left winger, despite the fact you've got a Timo Werner as well? Uh, give us a call on that. 81089 on the text as well. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.